I believe we can get started. Let's close our eyes as we have a word of prayers. Heavenly Father, we bless your name for this morning. Thank you for this privilege you have given to us as your children to gather together once again. Thank you for what you are doing for these uh, your great your, your great people. Thank you, Lord, because you have a outstanding plan for them, not just for their lives, not just for their families, but also for their community and for the world at large. Thank you, Father, for the foundation that you're building. We pray, oh Lord, that your name be glorified in Jesus' name. Father, as we come together this uh, morning to uh, share together on how to move forward, our families, our, our career, our life, oh Lord, I pray. Let your Holy Spirit minister to every one of us today, Lord, in Jesus' name. Bless Amen. us, Father, and Lord, I pray that that which you have for us today, we will achieve it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Speak Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So um, we have a, a very limited time, as, as we should. So we're going to uh, go into our study this morning. So as I look at this uh, topic that we are looking at, you know, um, I thought about different ways to approach this within the time limit that we have. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to approach it this morning as a preacher. Uh, I'm going to uh, approach this as a, uh, call it a speech, call it a lecture, what have you, uh, just to make sure that um, uh, we get the best out of this. I know we are still going to have opportunities to listen to messages as we have always do. So I pray the Lord will speak to us today in Jesus' name. As I look at this topic that uh, the Lord has laid in the heart of our leaders to share, perseverance, as I always do, I like to, first of all, break down what the topic is all about. Yeah, even though we're not going to read a lot of uh, Bible passages, but we're still going to read some to high on to home in the, the uh, topic of our discussion today. And as I search the scriptures, I found a Bible verse that kind of encapsulates the topic that we are looking at today. And that is in Hebrews chapter 10, as you see it up there. Hebrews in chapter 10 of Hebrews, and then in uh, verse 36. Hebrews chapter 10 in verse 36. The Bible says, For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. Actually, another version of the scripture says, for ye have need of perseverance, ye have need of patience. So the word patience is just opposed with the word perseverance in this place. So I believe that uh, for majority of all that are here, we are married, whether newly married or married for some time or preparing to get married, you know, and uh, we know that we always talk about seeking the will of God in marriage. And after you have known the will of God, he's saying that after you have done the will of God, you need perseverance, you need patience for you to be able to receive the promise that your family has set out to receive. So that set the table for us today, talking about perseverance in fulfilling family goals and attaining financial security. I'm going to tell you, uh, within the short time that we have, uh, it's going to be tough for us to be able to cover uh, a lot of things on this uh, on this subject today, but we'll see how far we can go, especially when it comes to the issue of financial security. I think that is a six credit cause on its own, So, and I don't want us to miss out on the other goals that we need to talk about. But hopefully we have another opportunity to talk about that, but we'll see how far we can go today. So when we talk about perseverance, perseverance is the ability to keep going, to keep doing something despite obstacles, despite delay in achieving certain goals. Another word for perseverance is greed. So uh, greed also describes perseverance, which can be described as sustained passion for long-term goals. So it's the ability to persist in doing something that you feel passionate about and you persevere in doing those things despite obstacles that comes uh, across your way. 
And uh, you must we know, need to know that perseverance is different from persistence. Persistence is the act of pursuing a course of action with the same energy and consistency. But perseverance, on the other hand, it's, it has element of persistence in it. However, there is element of obstacle, you know. So perseverance is go farther beyond persistence. Perseverance is the ability to maintain that same energy and consistency through the process of overcoming painful circumstances. Also, perseverance is different from determination. Determination is the firmness of purpose that drives you towards your goal. However, perseverance is the resolve and the commitment to achieve what you want, no matter what obstacle that may arise. Again, perseverance, your determination is in perseverance, but it goes a step further than determination. Uh, that is why it is very unique. And based on this definition and comparison, you realize that one thing stands out in the definition of perseverance, and that is obstacles. And uh, thank God for what our brother shared at the beginning. I like that slide a lot. You know, it talks about it. You know, obstacle is what, how your perseverance is being tested. So based on this definition, perseverance includes obstacle. And that means there is no perseverance without obstacles. And similarly, there is no worthwhile goal that you can achieve without an obstacle. Therefore, to achieve any meaningful, meaningful goal in life, you need a lot of perseverance as we are going to talk about it. You know, in businesses, when we talk about obstacles, the businesses talk about it as, uh, you know, headwinds. These are the things that face businesses. And uh, that word headwinds is borrowed from uh, aviation, you know, and it simply means when wind is blowing in the opposite direction of a plane's flight. So every, every plane, every plane that flies, needs to make an adjustment for that. The same thing businesses every year, they might have a stellar year, have a record profit, have a record growth, but every year when they come together to, to revamp their goals, they're going to look at, okay, so what are the headwinds that we're going to face in the coming year? And they make, an, they make necessary preparation for that. The same thing in our families, headwinds are going to come, obstacles are going to come, and we need to make preparation for that. Obviously, on the other hand, the other side of that is the tailwind, which is the wind that blows in the direction of the flight, which kind of helps the flight to prepare. So the same thing, businesses, uh, corporations, and companies, they examine both the headwinds and the, and the, and the tailwinds that fit their business as they go into the, uh, to the new fiscal year that they have. The same thing as families, we need to examine this from time to time. What the headwinds that face our families and how to tackle that. So the objective today is to look at these goals and then uh, talk about how can we achieve these goals despite the obstacles that we face. And uh, you see, the, if we have a call, uh, so when we talk about setting family goals, very briefly, we're just going to quickly look at this very briefly. You know, this might not be all important. Passing, but you're going to realize that most modern families we have the same goals because our goals are actually being uh, influenced by our societies, being influenced by our uh, by the generation where we are in, and also by our society. And if you look at that circle, you look like look at those five goals. These are the goals that is mostly common to families. And you're going to realize as we talk about these goals, what makes it a little challenging as we go on, the reason why we are talking about perseverance is because none of these goals are none of these goals are independent. They are all mutually exclusive. That means you cannot just focus on one and drop the balls on the others. So you need to find a way by which you are going to juggle all these goals around, making sure that you achieve the purpose and at the same time, you don't let any of them fall by the wayside. So you see those uh, kind of uh, the ones that we are going to uh, look at today. So again, like we said, goals, these are common goals that most families have, that most families said. What is different is the systems by which, can you still on that slide for a minute, please? Uh, what is different is the systems by which we achieve those goals. You know, and that's what different from family to family. Every family wants to have each of these goals. So uh, these goals are intertwined and uh, the, pro the, the challenge is navigating each of them for, uh, without tension in the family and uh, for us to be able to achieve each, each of these goals without breaking apart 
the families. And I pray the Lord is going to guide and lead us today as we go into this in Jesus' name. And when you look at what causes problem in families today, these are the reasons. These are the things. When families break apart, especially those that don't know the Lord, because as we believers have these goals, unbelievers have these goals, when they cannot align on these goals, that is what brings breakage in family, break, bring on happiness in the home. So let's quickly look at these goals one by one very quickly. Number one, look at the career goal. For most part, this goal is set for each of the spouses before marriage. Uh, uh, majority of you that are here are married or you're getting ready to marry. So you already have a career path. That are you already done with your bachelor, your PhD, or your master's, or what have you. Or some of you have also you already have your job. So before you come together. So each individual already have these goals. Then when we come together, when you are alone, it's easy, you know, for you to focus on this goal. And you might not even bother on some of the other things. Uh, or you can treat them, you know, in a way very a little bit independently, but when you come together as a family, where the challenge comes is, how do you fuse together? Your each individual goal with your career, our career, his career, plus the other goals that you have for your family. So that's the challenge that the family have, how to align these goals and make sure that you fulfill your purpose. So it is important for you to talk about this goal, to talk about it, and you must understand that Career is different from job. You know, you may have a career and you may have a job. Your job can be a, your, a career. And your job can just be, you know, you just have to do something, you know, for you to be able to put uh, body and souls together. So these are the things that you need to align about. And as we talk about the other goals, you are going to realize how these goals fuse into these other goals that we are going to talk about. Because of time, let's look, look at the next one. The next goal that you need, stay there again. So the next goal that, uh, that, uh, that, that, that you need, obviously, is your spiritual ministerial goal. And we are talking about this because we are believers, right? And these goals cannot fall by the wayside. And as a matter of fact, as a husband, your first duty, you know, you are the priest of your home. You are the pastor of your home. If your wife come into your life as a child of God, save and sanctify. It must be an, an ultimate goal in your heart to make sure that that woman does not backslide when it comes to you. And the same thing as a woman, you must make sure that that man does not backslide. You don't do things that is going to push that man away from the Lord. Sad to say, there are a lot of people that are not going to make heaven today because of the kind of spouse that they get married to. You don't want to be that kind of a spouse. And that is why you want to help your partner. You want to help your, your, your better half to achieve that spiritual goal. And when we talk about spiritual goal, you must remember, each of us are still going to stand before God individually, even though you are a family in the world. Your marriage is only recognized here on earth. When you get to heaven, you are going to stand as individuals before God. And that is why you cannot forget that. You cannot just hang your spiritual life on the on the on the life on the spiritual life of your husband or hang your spiritual life on the spiritual life of your wife. You know, as you have a family, you know, your family devotion, your family spiritual goal, individual member of the family must have their goal, their personal relationship with God as well. The second one, which is more nuanced, is the ministerial goal. And this is important to talk about because, again, spiritual goal, that is non-negotiable. Each member of the family must have that goal, your, you know, how to develop yourself spiritually and you must check up and be he, as we are going to hear this word a lot as we talk about this, you need to be the high of each other. You need to hold each other accountable. When you see that your husband is not, doesn't pray as he used to be, your wife doesn't pray as she used to be, you need to hold each other accountable and help that woman and help that man to make sure that he doesn't fall by the wayside and she doesn't fall by the wayside. So the other one is, like I said, ministerial goal. It can be simple as simple as which area of the church, area of work in the church you are going to get involved in. You get involved in the choir. Thank God many of you that are here. Thank God for what you are doing already. You get involved, you know, in the young adult fellowship like this. Maybe the wife might be, might be appointed as the executive, you know, and the husband is not. How do you help one another to manage that and fulfill that goal? Because if you are if you're a woman, for instance, your sister, for instance, your, 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 the Bible describe your husband, he said, is your crown. It might be less, well, less red than you. 
he might be less educated than you, but yet the Bible says it's your crown. You know, the Bible describes him that it's your cover. So if he doesn't bless the ministry that you have, it's going to be difficult for you to be filled in that ministry. And that is why I believe that when you are in courtship, before you get into this union, each of you, you kind of, you know, understand the direction that each of you is going to. So the, there's the need for that support. If it's the woman that is appointed in the church to do one thing or the other, the husband must be there to back her up. And if it's the man that is appointed to do something, the woman must be there to back him up as well. You know, when we were, many years ago, when I was in university, uh, back, back in the days, uh, there was a sister that was a uh, too close to me and we were talking one day and she was like i don't know what led to that conversation but like hmm, let me i cannot marry pastor never and uh his pastor her dad was actually one of the big pastors in lagos then you know so but at the point is when she when she said of course i asked her why she has a reason but in my mind i was like thank you for saying that for letting me know you know uh the, the point is if that kind of a person eventually get to marry somebody that they call the ministry, there's going to be friction in that family. So that is why you need to understand the direction that each member of the family is going. And you already joined together, you are one. There is no going back, you know. You need to do everything possible to back up one another to fulfill that ministerial goal that God might have called you into. The next one is social relationship or social goal. You know, in most cases, people marry within the same social circles. As I look at most of you here, you, you know, you grew up together or you meet, 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 met yourself over here in America and then uh, you have been together in young adult ministry, in the choir, in the in your local church and all of that. So you probably, one way or the other, felt comfortable with, with each other. You have the same circle of friends. So this should not be, in, for the most part, this should not be a major issue for you uh, as, a, as a family. However, there might be some instances that, uh, uh, you know, there's no way you can know each other uh, very in, in, in detail before you get married. And then uh, if your husband has some kind of friends or some kind of people that are in my ass with or your wife is that, you need to sit down and talk about it. So is this a kind of example that we want to set in the families and all of that? So again, this should not be an issue for those of us that grow up in the Lord, but it is very important for us to have the rule of engagement in the family to define the kind of social cycles that you are going to uh, be dealing with. Let's go to the next one very quickly, childbearing and childbearing. Now we are getting to a very serious one. Now, childbearing uh, is different from childbearing. You know, childbearing, the goal for childbearing is to be pretty straightforward, right? You talk about how many kids are you going to have? When are you going to start having them? What are the hint of us of, this, uh, of the children? So these are the kind of things that you probably have talked about during uh, your courtship. And, you know, for most of us, based on our culture, you know, when to start having them is nine months after after marriage. And so culture is different, you know. Uh, and it's if you can, you know, you, 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 you can discuss this because some people believe that immediately children comes to the family, it change, the dynamics change completely. You know, uh, the time that you have between, between when you get married and the time that the children have, you are not going to have that kind of time again until when you become a next head, who knows when, maybe 50, maybe 60, and what have you. So you can decide when you want to start expecting them, when you want to start having them. And you must, real, you must know that this goal is the fulcrum of every other goal. You know, we have talked about career goal, we have talked about ministerial, we have talked about social, but every other thing, again, immediately children comes into the picture. And in fact, immediately you get pregnant, but with them, the decision of the family change. That is why even the word they call it life-changing experience. And that is why this is something that you need to prepare for. So if uh, you are here, you are not married yet, and uh, you know, you're thinking, this is something that we need to take seriously. We should not just assume that, yeah, uh, it's, it's rubber stamp. We get married, then children come. Do you plan for them? What is the goal that you have? Because immediately this comes into play, Every other thing change. You know, it's even, uh, that's what, again, that's what most of us did. Nine months, children come. There's nothing wrong with that if that is good that you have, because there are some, there are some circumstances that may warrant you to do that. And in fact, if you look at where we came from back then in Africa, when you get married and uh, two months or three months, 
and you go, especially you go to church, they are looking at the woman's tummy and they are not seeing something coming up. They will be rather, sorry, bro, we are praying for you. Uh, it is well, bro. Uh, you know, because they assume that, you'll be wondering that what are they talking about because that is the expectation. However, your family might be unique. You need to decide what you are going to do. So, uh, and when you come to child rearing, so this is going to take the most part of your adult life. And that is why it is very important for you to be prepared for this. You know, uh, as we, African, again, it's part of our culture, but, but then it's possible for you to decide, okay, maybe one is going to come. What is the interval? Depending on the career, depending on the other things, you might want to decide that, okay, maybe after one, maybe you can wait for two years, or it can be that let's just have everything we want to have and know that we just concentrate and get over this phase. But it's very important to have that plan because this area of your life is going to take majority of your married life. That is why you should get ready, get prepared for this area of your life. There are a lot of things you can do before you get to the child rearing phase that when you get there, it's going to be difficult. But imagine if you get married and then there is no gender yet, and now you can do anything you want in within the confine of your home, you know, uh, you can wear anything you want within your home, you can do whatever you want, whether in your bedroom, in your living room, you are not, you don't care about, you know, because it is just you and your wife. But when the children come into the picture, the picture changes. And that is why you need to be ready for this. There's something very important I want to mention here, because again, child rearing goal is being affected by every other thing that you're doing. And then, when you are, when you get to this phase, you know, environment is the most important thing that you can provide for your children. You know, they used to, uh, some people will say that, ah, children are blank slate. You can write whatever you want on them. I'm, I'm sorry, I disagree. Children are not blank slate. Children are divinely preloaded being that come. And that is why you don't teach a child how to make friends. You don't teach a child how to be, you have to smile. You don't teach a child how to frown. You don't teach a child how to snub people. You know, every child that is born is already preloaded. You know, he has, he, has his, he has his own thing that he has come with. The only thing, the major influence you can have in the life of your children is the environment that you provide for them. So the primary purpose of parenting is providing the right environment for your children to thrive. And you must understand that very well. The primary purpose of your parenting is to provide that environment for them to try. Children are not programmable objects. That you can just write whatever you want on them. They are divinely preloaded that come with their own, they come with their own potentials. They just need the right environment for them to try. So it's the environment you provide for them that's going to determine the future of those children. And then, you know, take for instance, uh, you, you, even though, like I said, you know, you cannot, you can, there are a lot of things that you cannot do, but what they are going to be is going to be dependent on where they grow up. For instance, the kind of friends that they are going to have, it's going to depend on the kind of environment you put them into. If you like, have a very beautiful mansion with beautiful garden, with beautiful swimming pool, you know, and uh, all room and suit and all of that. If they are living around those people that are riffraff people that are you just tell you what, what is college, you're not thinking about anything like that, don't be surprised, no matter what you say. You know, sometimes we think that you can just brainwash those children, you can just say whatever. Your word has little impact on them. More, what has the most impact on them is the environment you put them. If you like, sit them down from today to tomorrow and be teaching them how to pray. What we actually teach them is what they see you doing within the house. What they're actually going to teach them is what they see in the church that you put there. What they're actually going to learn is in the school that you put there. That's where they're going to be, develop everything that they are going to, uh, that they're going to learn. And that is why, especially for we Africans, if we are going to break this culture, this chain of, uh, you know, uh, parochial way of looking at Africa and when they grow up, all they need to do is they just go into sport and uh, they just go into music, they just go into that. Why that? Some of those parents, maybe they can even say, I want my child to be this, I want my child to be that, but it's all the, because the people that they see around them, that is what they do. And that is why even your prayer alone cannot do it. 
environment is so important. And that is why when you are making these other decisions, when you are setting others, these, these other goals, you must understand that it's very important the environment you put there. Just to give you an instance, you know, we just moved from a different town to where we are now. And uh, where we were before, my children, they have their friends, you know, they have, I didn't choose the friends for them, they choose their friends, they have their friends in the neighborhood, they have friends in the school and all of that. But eventually, when we moved to the new place, you know, even though they didn't like it at first, but within two weeks, they develop a new friend, a new circle of friends. They've left behind those ones that are there. And I begin to ask myself, even though I didn't choose the friends for them, but I influenced their decision. You know, they, they chose from the options that I provided for them. So the same thing, when you make the decision of where to raise your children, you must have that at the back of your mind. And the last one on this point is the financial goal. When we talk about financial goal, actually this is, uh, this is uh, the determinant of every other, every other thing that we're talking about today. And that's why, I say, I, this, like I said, we're not going to be able to go in depth into this, but what you need to understand here Financial goal, this determines is the speed by which other goals are going to move. Just to take for instance, we are talking about providing a good environment for your children to thrive and to develop and all of that. If you don't have the financial well with that to do it, you are only going to be able to do within the confine of the resources that you have. So that is why it is very important for us to understand this. When you get your financial goal wrong, it can cause a derailment or significant delay in achieving every other goal that you have. That is why both spouses, you need to be extremely literate in this aspect. If you are going to achieve a common goal, this is not something that you're going to be taught in school or that you're going to be taught uh, uh, that's going to come to you naturally. This is something you need to be deliberate about. You need to make a deliberate effort to, uh, to, to educate yourself. I mean, the world is, 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 is the world not teaching us something. I know there are some of you here that are doctors, some of you are engineers, some of you are lawyers. But take for instance, many of your many of the people that eventually get to the top in organizations that become CEOs, that become CEO, that become all those things, they probably might not even be the doctors and the lawyers and the engineers and whatever. They need to look for someone that is financially savvy to lead that hospital. They need someone like you. I work for a pharmaceutical company, right? The person that is heading the pharmaceutical company, he has no degree in pharmacy. He was a business, pure business major and is leading one of the biggest pharmaceutical companies in the world because the world understand that get your financial go wrong, every other thing goes wrong. So, and that is why you cannot just say that, oh, I'm not a financial expert. I don't need to care about that. You need to care about that. You need to be literate. And it is important for every one of you, the husband and the wife, you need to de de develop financial literacy for you to be able to run your family successfully. So again, this is not something you are going to be thought. You need to have conversation about it. This should be a conversation you should have very early in your relationship. And you must continue to have that conversation at these changes. Somebody can have all the degrees in the world and from the top universities, and yet they can be financially dumb. And that is why you see a lot of people, they go into bankruptcy after making millions of dollars. You know, you must understand that your home must be run as a business, especially when you are starting off. It doesn't matter how much you are earning. You know, you must run it as a business that has a profit and loss account, that has a balance sheet. When we talk about profit and loss, those two things, there are two divisions. You have the revenue, you have the expenses. Revenue is what everybody focuses on. I want to make six figures. I want to make seven figures. I want to increase my salary. But the point is, I don't care what you make. If you don't get your expenses under control, you can never reach. That is why it's very, very important for you to get your expenses under control, not just making more and more money. And uh, you must, again, the two of you must align on how to run these things and be literate, you know, teach yourself on how to attain to this uh, uh, level. Very quickly, I know my time is running out. Uh, I want to talk about, yeah, we're not going to be able to go into details of this, but just to mention very quickly, how do you attain financial security? The building blocks of financial security is your savings. You know, I like this quote from, uh, from uh, Charlie Munger. He's, uh, he's, he's late, he just died, I think, last year or something. Uh, he was the vice chairman of Bakshia, how we have uh, yeah, it, it was credited as one of the people that helped uh, build 
the Berkshire uh, Hathaway conglomerate. He said, amassing your first 100,000 is a critical early milestone on the path to long-term wealth. said, I don't care what you have to do. If it means working everywhere and not eating anything that wasn't purchased with a coupon, find a way to get your hand on 100,000. I know people ask uh, why 100,000, why not 90, why not? Uh, well, you know, it's just conceptually. On, when you are able to get to that, and it's not just getting there. If you get there at 60, what's the point? If you get there at 50, what's the point? The point is get there as soon as possible. In your early 20s, in your early 30s, before you clock your 40, this should be do everything that you can to build that. So the building block of your financial security is your savings. And the best vehicle, you know, very quickly now, the best vehicle for building your savings at the beginning, for those of you that are working already, is to maximize all the financial benefit that your companies have to offer. No, make sure that you never leave any money on the table. I have a table there. If we go to the next slide, I have a table there that's kind of give you a sort of a summary of uh, some of the things that you can do. You know, very importantly, number one thing on the list, don't joke with your emergency savings. You know, in all your spending. Remember, we talk about getting your expenses under control. You cannot save if you spend everything that you make. And that is why you must figure out a way by which you get your expenses under control. People ask me every time, oh, what uh, give me idea of financial investment? What can I invest on or whatever? I want to know what to currently spend your money on. So before you can free up yourself to make, uh, you know, investment, you need to have savings. And that, that's why, number one, it is very, very important for you to create what you call, what is being called emergency savings account and it doesn't matter whether you're in school right now whether you're working right now if you don't have one make sure that you work towards that do everything that you can like charlie monga said if it's going to mean that you're not going to buy gas in your car for the for the next few 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 months for you to be able to build up that you need that discipline for you to be able to do it so that's very very important so emergency savings and that is compulsory you can peg that to a percentage of your of your honeys and it doesn't matter what your expenses looks like now. Just find a way to get there. And then when we talk about maximizing your workplace benefit, again, no time to go into, into details. There are three things that I highlighted. That number one, your 401k. If your company offer you 401k, there is no excuse under the heaven by which you should not maximize that opportunity. Making sure if your company say we match 100% for 5%, 5% that means at the minimum, 5% of your honey should go into it so that you can get the benefit of the additional that your company is going to give you. And you must make sure that you increase this every year so that you can continue to build it up. So that's that's number one vehicle by which you can do that. Number two, the second one is uh, what, is, what is called an uh, employee stock purchase, uh, purchase uh, option. I know it's not many, it's not all companies that offer this, but a lot of companies that offer it. If you happen to work with a company that offer this, make sure you take advantage of it. And what does it what does it do? Buy the share of your company at a percentage. In most cases, they give you at fifteen percent. You know, or sometimes they give you at ten percent. That means automatically you make fifteen percent profit without doing anything. So those are the things you cannot joke with. Despite all your spending and what have you, make sure you take advantage of that. The next one is the stock option. Actually, this one you you don't make personal contribution to it, your company give it to you as a benefit. But when you are giving the decision you need to make on this point is, should I keep it or should I sell it? You know, if you want to know more about that, you can read more about it. But that's an opportunity, that's an option you can get. So, and uh, when you are looking for job, you know, these are the things that you need to look at. Don't just look at your your base pay that we're going to be paying you 150,000. We're going to be paying you 200,000. What are the other things that are that are in between? Because these are the things that are going to help you to be able to build up your savings. And there are some other things you can do beyond your uh, employer, your your workplace benefit savings. Like we said, that's Roth IRA that is there. That is traditional IRA. And if, after you have um, after you have been able to max out all these other things, you can consider personal taxable brokerage account. So, and these are the things that you need to get your hands on before you begin to have, an, uh, because you begin to have big families in your in your home. So this is very important. Again, because of time, there's a lot to talk about it here, but we cannot. So now let's go to the final, final thing before we pray. 
what are the obstacles to fulfilling family goals? Three things I want to uh, mention here. Yeah, so that's another slide we can share it later. Uh, three things I want to mention here. Number one is a conflict of interest. Number two is a confluence of interest and then your choice of interest. Because what creates tension in the family is conflict of interest. Again, you are coming, two people coming together, you have different backgrounds. In your family or bringing, you have different background in your career, in your academics, in your understanding. So there is that different priority, that different opinions, and then there is the different worldview that you have. So uh, let's just ramp up now. So these are the things that you need to kind of look at. And to be able to address this issue, that is where confluence of interest or alignment of interest. You need to think about how to align your interests. And finally, in making your decision, you must understand there are two types of decision. If you go to the last slide, there are two types of decision, the moral decision and your priority decision. A moral decision that should not be questioned, you know, that's the decision between right and wrong. So you are born again, you should be able to make that easy. Where the challenge comes is a priority decision. That is to choose it between right and right. In that case, we need to examine what glorifies God. What is going to guide our family to fulfilling our overarching goal? So these are the things that we need to consider as we make those decisions. I pray that the Lord will give us understanding of more uh, to uh, and uh, and open our heart to uh, to understand more of this thing that we are talking about today in Jesus' name. This is just to give you an eye hope. Now you can read more, you can educate yourself more. It is important for you to be educated. And again, remember all these things; they are not in vacuum; they are together. You need to figure out a way by which, as a family, you join your hands together in fulfilling this goal. Let's close our eyes as we go to the Lord in prayers. Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for the opportunity to learn from you today. Glory be to your name, Lord, in Jesus' name. I pray for your children, Father. Give them understanding and open their eyes to learn more from you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father, because you have answered our prayers. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. We pray. Amen. Sorry, we have to run. Over Thank it. you very much, sir. We can all return to the um, mail room. Yeah. Welcome back. Welcome back. Um, one thing I can say from my own breakout room is that wisdom, right? The facilitator there was dishing out wisdom, and the Bible makers, you know, he's giving us wisdom to make wealth. And I'm very sure in the other room, the same thing. Wisdom causes a man's face to shine, right? In terms of career, in whatever place he is placed. Now it's time for question and answer. But before that, I want someone from the two breakout rooms to share one thing. What is one key takeaway from your breakout room? I can call anyone randomly too, but it would be good if we have any representative. One key takeaway. From a career, don't run away from challenges. Thank you very much, sir. Someone from the family, please. Uh, from the family session, uh, the word I would want to use is plan. Not just having things in the head, but like actually making plans that should be worked towards. Thank towards. you. Jeff. Thank you. Thank you. So you can all drop your question and answer on the Slido link, and you can check the chat. There's a Slido link, and if you have any question you want to ask directly, I just um and the fire using the reason emoji any question Okay. 
Anyone from the room? Okay, no one for now. So I just go directly to the slide though. We have a first question here and the question is for both speakers. So we like the contribution of both speakers. The question is, how do you balance career and family along with church responsibilities, especially with all the busy activities in church as a worker? How do you balance career and family along with church responsibilities, especially with all the busy activities in church as a worker? I don't know where to go first. Yeah, what's John? Okay, John K. So I can't go for us. Thank you. Uh, praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. um, how to balance career and family. Career and family. Along with church responsibilities, especially with all the busy activities in church as a work. Yes, yes, yes. So one, I would say that you have to define clear priorities. Um, what, 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 what is your priority? Understand your priority so that you, it can help you make decisions, right? So you know what, what, what is your priority? Is it church? Is it, is it this? Is, is it, is it, is it family and all of that? So I mean, I would say your, uh, for 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 those who are you know, married and all of that, your, your, your home, uh, your family is your first priority, uh, is your, is, is, is your, is your first church, is your first ministry. And you must make sure that you're not failing in there. Uh, because if, if, if you, if you do all that and then they see who you are and they see you outside, you're also an example. You're also supposed to, supposed to be stewards to your home. So you understand, okay, there is work. W what are the priorities? Now, when you talk about church and you talk about your work, who has given you that work, right? So uh, what is the priority there? Is it is it God that has given you that work? Um, set pr clear, clear priorities with, you know, your work. If you have to leave the work at five, you have to, you know, whatever it is that you have to do so that you can continue with your spiritual growth. You can uh, continue with your involvement in the church community and communicate openly, uh, whether it's with your family, uh, whether it's with your work. Uh, you know, I have a, I have a program at church that, you know, is going to be uh, X, X number of days. Like, you know, you take time off, like you, you, you don't just wait till the last minute. Oh, we've had that program. We've been announcing it and all of that. And then in, in two days, you tell your manager, like, oh, I have to go, you know, two days. Like, we have a deadline. You, you, you communicate openly. Let them know, you know, whether you take time off, you work with HR so that, you know, there are no, so you can plan, you can set, you set clear goals, you, you know, you, you, you understand what the priorities are. You have a, a schedule and you communicate with, you know, your family, with, uh, with your manager, so with with uh, uh, at work as well, so that there are no conflicts and you are able to manage uh, all all of the responsibilities and all of that. And and God would help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. I hear three things. First, you need to know, understand your goal. Then you set priorities right, and you have clear communications. Thank you very much. Um, the next person. I don't know if you can help us, sir. Uh, yeah, I think uh, Brother Kimui has uh, said most of the things. But one thing I'm just going to have is discipline. You know, I get this question all the time. But one thing I can tell you is it is doable. Uh, you just need to figure out, in addition to what he has said, you need to figure out how to compartmentalize your life. You know, uh, some of you know, if I have, if I have to take time out, you know, to take my kids for game, I still do that. Take them for almost every game they have, go for every every school activities they have, and at the same time, do what I need to do in the church. If you need to delegate some things, if you need to say no to some things, yeah, you have to do that. But again, like I said, the family is a priority. And I compartmentalize my life in a way that I know that this time is when I'm going to spend on this church thing. And that's why, even if you notice the choir thing, if I'm going to send messages, I'm going to say lesson, I'm going to I already have the time allotted for that. That this is the time I'm going to do it. 
doesn't matter what anybody has before that. I know that I have the time. I'm going to get that. Day. So that's very important for you to be able to get to that point in your life. You need to allocate your time. And what you need to spend that time for, the discipline to spend it for it at that time. And when you move to the next thing, focus on that next thing and do it at that time. And then you're just going to see every other thing is going to fall in line. So that's very important to meet. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Um, yeah, yeah, something, having the right discipline, not just having a priority or clear communication or the goal, but the discipline to stay true. Um, I have another question and it's relating to finance here. The question is, what is a personal taxable brokerage account? Uh, yeah, I know we have a lot of questions. I'm going to be very brief. So a brokerage account is a non-retirement investment account. You know, uh, we mentioned different types of accounts, like your 401k, your IRA, your either Roth IRA or traditional IRA, all those are retirement accounts, which means that technically you shouldn't assess those until, you're, until you retire. But your taxable brokerage account is a, is a uh, investment account that you create by yourself and you use your post-tax money. I think I have a slide there that we, didn't, we were not able to share. So the use of post-tax money for you to uh, buy those, you know, buying the stocks, you know, whether stock, whether bond, uh, whether funds, mutual fund, uh, index fund, ETFs, and all that. So that one you can sell it at any time if you if you, you, know, if you, if you need money. So that's what brokerage account is. So it's your personal investment account, which is different from your retirement account, which is your 401k, your IRA, and your ESP. Thank you very much for the answer, sir. Um, this question goes to Brooklyn. So how do you identify your purpose? How do you identify your purpose? Uh, this question is, uh, is one that um, a lot of people want to know, struggle with understanding what their purpose is. So I would say that it is important to understand what God has placed in you. What are your gifts? What are the things that you do very well? Now, purpose is your reason for being. Purpose is uh, understanding the unique role that you play in this life. And growing up, there are times that, you know, you might do something, you might, you know, do this and that, like uh, whether as a child and all of that. And some people might say, you know, that child, hmm, he's going to be an engineer. They're seeing some of the things that God has placed in that child, even when they have not gotten to be older, they can see some of the traits that, okay, these are some things that God has put in this child. And now when you look at those things, you can then, as, as the child growing up, you can then dig deep, talking to God, getting, you know, what is the sense of direction? And, you know, you go to school, you take courses, those things help and illuminate what it is that God has put in you. And, and, and finally, you want to know your purpose. You have to talk to the one who created you. Right. So God, 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 God had a plan, had a plan, a purpose for each and every one of us. And your purpose might be different from my purpose. So it's not enough to look at that brother and be, wow, I love how that brother carries himself. I love how he does this and all of that, how he's used by God. Talk to God, have him tell you what it is that he has placed in you. You, you know, like Esther, you are in, in, in a place for a time such as this. There is a specific reason that God brought you to this world. And living your purpose is what leads to a sense of fulfillment. You would see that, you know, people who have money, they, they have tons of it and they are still involved in drugs because there is still a gap. There is still a hole. There is still something missing. They don't have that sense of purpose. They don't have that fulfillment. But I trust now, when you align yourself with God's will, when you align yourself with what it is that God has for you, he would lead you to your purpose in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. So in summary on what you said, not your own will. You have to identify God's will. And when you find your purpose, you'll be able to get the message with drive. 
in fulfilling your purpose, you can actually make impact on life. Thank you so much, sir. Um, I have this question for both of you because it's more of the career and the family aspect now. Um, the question is as regards burnout. And you say, how do you know when to stop taking challenges to avoid being overwhelmed slash burnout? Yeah, so let me uh, go first here. Uh, well, again, uh, it is very important for you to understand your capacity, okay? And this all boils down, this all boils down to plan. Yeah, so when you plan, when you're talking about, uh, depending on the stage of your life, right? So if you are in school, uh, uh, there are a lot of things that you cannot really control. Uh, so you have to give your priority to your school. We have a program in the church. We have an event. We have this. We have that. There are things in your school that you cannot, you know, say no to. You have to be there. So that's uh, that's that. You need to recognize that. But overall, when you are, say you at work, you have family, you have all of that. You got to understand your capacity. And you got to be able to plan again. All boys have to plan and plan and plan and understand when to say no. There's nothing wrong in saying no. And again, people don't really have problem with someone that says no. When they where they have problem is if you have if you have been dropping the ball. Say for instance in your in your job, you know. They understand, they know that this person is hardworking, it's always there, you get a job done. If a time comes that you have too much in your plate that you cannot carry, if you say respectfully decline that, they're gonna, I believe they're gonna understand. But if you have always been dropping the ball, you have not always been meeting up with challenges, and then you are saying you are burning, burning out, you know, that person is is just preparing his uh his uh, termination letter. So you must. First of all, let people understand, you know, your commitment. The same thing in the church, right? We have a lot of activity, we have a lot of programs. We know that when you are, when you can, you make every effort to be there. You are not the type that always give excuses all the time just to escape. But if the if the time comes and you need that, I need a retreat, I need a timeout. Communicate and make it known. People, you understand again. The most important thing is. Make sure people understand your value. When they understand your value, when the time comes for you to say no, they will definitely understand. If they don't understand at that point, you know, you got to rethink whether where you are is the right place for you to be. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. So in summary, not being lazy, knowing what challenge to pick and getting the ability to say no at all times. Thank you. Uh, uh, so sorry, bro, Peter, not at all times. Not all times, not like... <laughs> But mature enough no, to say no. We will say no at all time. <laughs> yes, then there's different reputation. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, bro, John, we want to uh thank you. Um, I will just add to that, uh, you know, bro, bro John has said that uh, you know, succinctly. Um, I would add to that to avoid burnout, you also need to recognize the signs. Um when you're feeling exhausted when you're frustrated you're irritable you're you're overwhelmed you have to understand what is going on so that you're not you know keep pushing and then you know when as my brother said you know recognizing your value when you when you when 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 you're close to burnout you're exhausted your your value decreases right so you don't have that you know utmost output that you usually have so recognize when you're you're, you're frustrated, recognize when you're irritable, re recognize when you're no longer able to perform at you know capacity and then find ways to pour back into yourself, find ways to rejuvenate, find ways to be renewed so that you can, you can get your cup back to a hundred percent and then have clear boundaries. Uh, you know, when it is like, you know, you're, yeah, so uh, some people glorify multitasking, um, which is like, you know, you're able to juggle multiple, multiple things and then, you know, you're not able to hold everything at once. So you're, 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 you're holding multiple things and things are falling. So have clear boundaries. Know, like our brother said, when to say no, know when you're at capacity that you cannot take on one more thing uh, because you would not be able to 
uh, perform and then learn to manage your time effectively. Uh, so it, it talks about what we talked about, you know, using discipline earlier. So if you are able to manage your time, you're able to know like, okay, I have room for one more thing. Or if you are at capacity uh, or if you're getting burnt out, then you know that, okay, I don't have any more room for 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 any more work whether it's at at, at church or at, at 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 school or you know at work uh and always always make time to pour back into yourself always make time to uh you know when 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 you are depleted yes sleep sleep does some of that uh but find ways to you know uh, recharge whether it's you know uh, listening to you know music you know that that is uplifting um, you know study of the word what whatever it is that would pour back into yourself so that you can be at full capacity to work again thank you thank you very much for the response um, because of time we just have two more questions to answer um, we have a lot of question here about six months but we just have two more to answer um, I would pick the question based on representation. So we have a lot of questions as regards um, high income and managing tax as regards that high income. But one question for Brashola Olaiwala is as regards family. And the question is, how should child-bearing and child-bearing goals be aligned when both spouses have different opinions? All right. Um, so it's not just a child-rearing and child-bearing goal. Pretty much in every goal, you are going to have, you are likely going to have different opinions, okay? And uh, I always say that when two people always think alike, so that means one of them is not needed, okay? Uh, if I have a team and then I call a meeting and I say, oh, this is what we are going to do, and uh, everybody say, I agree. The next meeting, I agree. The next meeting, I agree. I'll find a way to get you out of it. So because... If you are going to agree at all times, then that means you are not needed. So remember that you are not marrying a, a Dundee. You are not marrying a robot. You are marrying a human being. So you are going to have different opinions. So I want to believe, you know, we are children of God. That is the starting point uh, where you understand that. Again, there are things that are non-negotiable. You know, like we we'll talk about the decision. We we'll talk about moral decision. We we'll talk about priority decision. Moral decision, the decision between right and right. I'm uh, sorry, between right and wrong. Priority decision, decision between right and right. A moral decision, which is right and wrong. You shouldn't have an uh, issue with that. If you, both of you are born again, you should be able to know that this is wrong. It cannot come near our family. But when it comes to priority, which is like this decision that we are talking about, is a priority decision. Whether it is two children or three children or four children, there is no right and wrong. It is right and right. You just need to figure out what is the best for our family. Now, each member, so for you, for you to make it work in this one and also in every other group, you need to come to the table with an open mind. You need to come to the table with a, read, with a readiness to be convinced and to convince the other person. So, and uh, when you say, well, the only, what I would say is when you have any disagreement on any goal or any decision you want to make, take a step back, you know, don't move on. Don't say that maybe as a husband, I say that whether you like it or not, this is what we are going to do. No, take a step back. Okay, so let's continue to think about this and let's come back again. You are going to realize at the end of the day, one person is going to move. So, but... Where, where if you have a very strong opinion on something, don't impose it. We are going to have two children, we're going to have three children, or this is where we should raise our children, or that is where we should raise our, raise our children. That, if you have, no matter the opinion you have, remember, you need to respect the decision of the other person, because again, there's no right and wrong in this decision. It is right and right. So you just need to make sure that you take time out. When you cannot agree again, Put it, put it on hold. Don't move on. That's it. That's the bottom line. Don't move on. Whether you are the why I say that, whether you like it or not, I want to open this account. And if you don't agree with me, I'm going ahead to do it. You are going to cause a serious trouble. Stay pure. And then maybe after two days, review, review it again. Review it again. And pray about it until you are able to come to a decision. But always recognize your spouse is not wrong. 
the holy has a different opinion as issue or as issue because it's a different human being from you. But figure out a way by which you are going to align that opinion and will. Thank you. Thank you very much for the response, sir. Um, before you go, just one more question. So I'll combine it together and it regards high income tax and life insurance. So the question is, what advice will you give to people who are high income earners and how can they maximize tax, you know, after as breaks? And the last is in the same question, is it good to combine things like um 401k and life insurance and rot hiring? Yeah, that's a, that's that's a mouthful. All right, so uh, I'm going to talk to that. Maybe brother Kumu, you can also chime in. Uh, so yeah, uh, you know, well, I stated in the slide that I presented to you, you know, talking about just some of those some of those employee employer offered benefit. There are some of them. We didn't get to that slide again. Maybe you can share with the people. There are some of them that have two benefits. So for instance, your 401k. Your 401k is a savings plan for you, but it is also a tax saving benefit for you. Your 401k, okay, your uh uh Roth IRA, you know, it has a difference, you know, there's no time to go into detail because in most cases you actually contribute post-tax money to your Roth IRA, but you can have IRA, you know, so which is also can give you tax benefits. So one of the ways by which you can really, really save yourself a lot of uh, tax is making sure that you maximize your 401k if your company or passive. Especially if you are if you are single, if you are married, you are because if you are married, this economy, I tell people that American economy is not favorable to single high earners. You know, uh, when you are when you are married and you have children, you have two, three, and you have three children, you have a lot of tax break that you can take advantage of. But one of the ways, just to run very quickly, one of the ways you can save money is making sure that you, you know, maximize your four one k. Because this is what happens if you do the calculation very well. If you contribute two hundred dollars into your four one k, how much really comes out of your account? Probably it's going to be around one hundred and forty. Because you are going to save like sixty dollars in tax. I'm just giving a rough, you know, a kind of rough figure. So the same thing, if you move on and you and you, you contribute four hundred dollars, the four hundred dollars is actually not coming out of your account. You are, what is coming out of your account is probably around three twenty or something like that. So it saves you a lot on that. So another thing, obviously, that you can do to save yourself, yeah, uh, we don't talk about this a lot. There's something called HSA, that is health savings account. Uh, this is, it also has a you know, tax benefit. Uh, there is FSA, there is HSA. HSA is related to high deductible insurance plan. So which means that if you go into high deductible insurance, just like the way you contribute, like the way your employer contributes to your 401k, they also contribute to your HSA account. But the beautiful thing with the HSA account is that you can, unlike FSA, that you have a maximum you can carry over. You can carry over everything. And all the money you put in that FS, HSA account also saves you on tax. So those are another, however, you need to be very, very careful uh, when you go into something like that. Uh, for instance, if you're married and you're not expecting a child yet and whatever, it's going to be a beautiful plan for you. But the year you're going to have a child, you need to think twice before you go into something like that. So there are a lot of things that you can do that you can juggle around that are going to save you, that are going to save you that. And uh, also there is the uh, 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 the education account, you know, like, uh, uh, what, what do you call it now in Massachusetts, that you can save a college fund account, you know, that you can put money, that can save you from state tax. So all those things are things that you can explore from that, uh, from, from that perspective. Other than that, you know, obviously your contribution to your 529 account, thank you very much. You can contribute to your, you know, uh, your tax also save you from, 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 uh, from uh, uh, tax. So at the end of the day, there's so much you can do. However, make sure you max out the ones you can do. Your retirement account is a good vehicle. Your HS is a good vehicle. 529 is a good vehicle that you can use to save yourself uh, from, uh, from taxes. And uh, the other one, the insurance. Uh, some of these are uh, talking about the life insurance or time, time life. I think 
for me personally, I have time like, you know, uh, and especially when you, you know, in our church, we pray that, okay, we're not going to die. You know, we're not going to die by the grace of God. God is going to keep us. But if you have two children, three children like me, you know, as you are praying, this is part of your responsibility to make sure that, you know, uh, you provide for their future. You know, if nothing happens, glory be to God, you know, but it's very important. Soon as you start having children and all of that, and the younger you are, the cheaper some of those things. Is. The IUL that somebody mentioned, uh, that's actually another good save, another account, that another thing you can open, you know, that can, because in that one, you can actually kind of borrow money and stuff like that. There's no time to go into that. But when you, if you ask me between time life or, uh, or whole life, I think to very, very large extent, I prefer to go with time life, you know, uh, it's cheaper. Uh, especially when you're if you're young and healthy and it's just put it there just a small amount maybe twenty dollars per month thirty dollars per month you are not even think about it so at least it's there to help you know, uh, you know for the future thank you thank you very much sir i don't know if you want to mention one thing maybe. okay um Rokumi, i don't know if you want to mention one thing oh no he said he said right. beautifully uh what i was gonna add was consult with professional uh so that you can get the best advice because uh these laws there are so many things right so you have two children you're unmarried you're single so you want to take advantage of the tax breaks uh my brother has said it best <laughs> thank you our speakers thank you for giving your time and the words of wisdom we pray that god will refresh in your wisdom in jesus name Amen. can we spend one minute just praying for them let's ask god to like you know, touch them and give them more wisdom. Let's ask God to bless them where they are. They will never go down Um, in their family, in their career, that God will continue to strengthen them. They will be of blessing to the church more and more in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, have we prayed. Amen. Thank you so much, sirs. Um, right now, we're going to move to our special announcement. Uh, uh, VG is coming up. May 3rd, and it's going to be from 10 p.m. to 10.05 a.m. And the tag is Fullness of Joy with the anchor verse of John 16, verse 24. You know, God is asking us to ask him in this month of May, maybe the beginning of the year, January, February, March, and April has not been so good for you. This is an opportunity for you to open your mouth and ask God. Said, if that will have you know, ask, ask that your joy might be filled. So, prepare your heart, invite others, tell many who are out there who don't join the VG that this is going to be a different one. And I pray as you come, may God bless you mostly in Jesus' name. Also, um, for the upcoming Naya conference, no registration deadline is the early registration deadline is April thirtieth by eleven fifty nine p.m. Don't forget to register to get the benefits of early registration. Um, share this flyer with many fellow others. Invite your friends in school. Share on WhatsApp groups. Share on WhatsApp status. And I pray as you invite many, you know, may God's kingdom be propagated in Jesus' name. Um, finally, I would like to mention that um our next our next um monthly meeting. We take place here on Zoom 2, and it is titled a minute, please. It is titled um, Purpose. Purpose. And it will be presented as follows. We are going to have different categories for young professionals, for grad students, for undergraduate students. For the young professionals, we're going to be having a niche for finding your purpose. Um, for the grad student, purpose-driven academic life. For the undergraduates, we're going to have purpose-driven academic life. The date, tentative date for now is May 25th at 11 a.m. same time. So just prepare, prepare your mind. We are going to send out flyers for that particular program. And I pray as you plan to attend, may God bless you immensely as he has blessed you in this one in Jesus' name. So thank you all for coming. Thank you very much. We thank you for spending our time. Thanks to our speakers. Thanks to other people who have joined us from other regions. 
And I pray that all that we have received based the permanent with us in Jesus' name. So thank you. Um, I don't know, Radiolo, sorry, sir. I think you want to take over from here. Oh, there is no other announcement. Let's share the grace together at the count of two. Yes, the recording will be shared. Let's share the grace together at the count of two. Thank you to our speakers. Thank you so much. One, two, go. Grace. Grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining. Have a good weekend. You too. Bye.